Keller Indians. Keller coming in with a record of 5-1 and one coming off a loss to last week against South Lake Carroll, 49-13. Eaton on a two-game winning streak. Uh, two district wins coming off a win last week here against Byron Nelson where they were the de facto um, visiting team right back here at Northwest ISD Stadium for some action. And Brandon, we have a developing story with the uh, Eaton Eagles quarterback Tyler Fussell concussion protocol. Yes, yeah, the the word we got here at the uh, stadium pregame. We were all sitting here watching warmups, and I noticed sophomore Noah Lugo taking all the snaps with the, with the ones, uh, getting the warmups. Couldn't find a 12 out there for Fussell. We looked for 16, which we were last week, and that whole little debacle. We got his jersey or a different number, but then we got word from. Up in the house, uh, he was in the Gush protocol. So, yes, the sophomore game, the sophomore's game for Noah Lugo against a very tough Keller defense that we're going to be talking about a lot all night. Oh, yeah. Big absolutely. time game. Yeah, so unfortunately, he does have a tough test here in his first, very first start, the sophomore quarterback. He we, he did come in last week against Byron, and he looked, looked pretty good against Byron. I mean, some plays. At the time, we couldn't even tell it wasn't Fussell until we really took a good look at the number and we're like, okay, yeah, that isn't Fussell. He made he made a few plays, so, I mean, obviously it is a tough task against the Keller Indians who have had a number of uh, shutouts this year and a few blowouts, so they definitely have a, a stout defense. So, we'll see what we'll see what the sophomore quarterback can do today. Yeah, Fort Noah Lugo last week, Mitchie got a lot of snaps, uh, pretty much played the whole second half. I think until the third string came in, really, but maybe he played the whole game. Yeah, he did play the whole game. He uh, he was four of six, 46 yards passing. They weren't throwing much because of the lead they had. And he ran the ball well seven times for 15 yards. And he scored twice with his legs last week. So he's already shown that he can score, try to make some things happen as we get ready to pause for the anthem. off just a few seconds away so yeah like we said it's gonna be Noah Lugo starting that quarterback today for the Eagles and they do have a very tough test here against the Keller Indians yeah we'll go ahead and give you a little bit of rundown on the Indians five and one on the year one and one in district one loss coming last week at 2 p.m. South Lake Carroll they're supposed to play on Thursday got the weather moved it they played a weird day game on Friday and lost that game 49 to 13. Granted, it's what happens to South Lake. Really, 49 to 13 is probably not one of the better scores you're gonna have in South Lake compared to some other teams. But besides that, the team defensively has been outstanding. They're plus 109 in the point differential. They allow 14.8 points per game. You take away the South Lake game and the other five games, they allow eight points per game. Yeah. Yeah, I remember because we were looking at their uh, schedule and we saw a few shutouts. I believe they were averaging, uh, they had given up a total of 20 points in their first three games, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, I can just go ahead well, and look at it. it well, there was a second game they gave up 23 when they beat uh, did Broswell and Little Elm. And then they had the other the other two games were shut out. So, yeah, yeah, they gave up 23 points in their first three games, and all of them came out in one game to a very good Broswell team. So a, a Broswell team that this Eaton team played and lost to. That's the one common opponent right now because they haven't played the same district foes yet. Yeah. And Keller did get that win. And we, speaking of that defense, we will see it first. And we will get a, get a look at Noah Lugo. Yeah. 
Both these teams have really good defenses. I was looking at some of the team stats, courtesy of Dallas Morning News pregame, and really both these teams come up in the show up in the top 20 in just about every defensive category. Incredible. So, JB Brown out in the backfield next to Noah Lugo. I'm expecting them to he rely heavily on JB Brown. And they go right to him first play. Catches the ball in the backfield. Picks up about eight on that play. JB Brown coming off of the 182 yards and three touchdowns he had last week. He had an incredible game last week. That was on the ground, and he added 56 receiving as well. Quarterback keeper is Noah Lugo putting his shoulder down, showing them he can run people over. Colton Vargas was the defender. We should see how many hits coach wants or allows Lugo to take. Oh, yeah. Being thin on quarterback. I think your emergency quarterback is Ben Roberts. Yeah. Which might not be such a bad thing because we've seen Roberts play. He is he's an all uh, all around athlete. JB Brown slow to get up after that play. Last year these teams met at Keller ISD Stadium and the Indians won or the Indians lost 21-10. Eaton's able to pull it out. A low scoring affair. Back to the ground they go as J.B. Brown spin move, breaking tackles. Good looking running, slides out of bounds after picking up the first down. And there we go, heavy dose of J.B. Brown early in this game. Yeah, and you feel like that's going to be the recipe, especially early. Let Lugo settle in a little bit. He came in last week, in a different situation. You already have the lead. You're in a good position. Now you got to kind of settle him in a little slower. So they actually mark him a yard short of the first down. Swing pass to J.B. Brown again. He does have the first down now. Runs into a defender. That's Cade Whitmore with the stop. That's what I'm talking about. Easing him in. Let him get a nice swing pass. Good blocking down field by Christopher Anderson, Jade Platt. Back to J.B. Brown they go. Stiff's arm, stiff arms the defender. Still on his feet, finally wrestled down after a pick of about six on the play. No surprise running that, having a lot of success running that left side, the Hunter Herb side. Oh yeah. You run right behind him, there you're gonna have success more than likely. Go to the air. Ball's caught. Breaks a tackle. Wrestled down. And that's Christopher Anderson on the catch. He's wrestled down kind of in the area of a of a, like a horse collar, but. Yeah, but then you saw him grabbing out his face mask. Maybe some, got a piece of his helmet. Coach Miller is right there yelling too. Yeah, it looked like it was in the area of a face mask as well. Something, but no flag. Back to the ground they go. That's J.B. Brown. Should they get Brown to rest? Jamari Harris. Jaden Platt coming in motion. Looking now field. The ball's caught. That's White Bear breaking tackles. Making defenders miss. He's finally brought down after picking up the first down. Charles White Bear. Yeah, like that pre-snap. Keller didn't show a lot of help over there. And they were playing really off. So take what you can get underneath uh, White Bear. Not a lot of players in this game played last year. There was a lot of seniors on the Eaton offense last year. But White Bear did. He had a touchdown against the Indians a year ago. Play action pass. 
Looking for Anderson, the ball falls incomplete. Yeah, last week they jumped out to a huge lead against uh, Byron, so they didn't pass the ball much, especially with uh, Fussell being in and out of the lineup last week. So White Bear, I believe he only had what one catch last week. Yeah, he's very quiet. Uh, it really feels like he's been quiet the last few times we've seen him. Yeah, you're right. He has. Give the ball to Jamari Harris again. Nice drive. This is the first third long for Lugo. And his third down has been very short manageable. Lugo scanning the field, looking, and luckily that ball falls incomplete. Cade Whitemere was there. He had an interception, but he did drop it. Yeah, it looked, I think Lugo thought Jaden Platt was going to go more towards the pylon. Platt was playing more for the first down. Looks like the field goal unit is going to attempt a 39-yarder. See if that's Hester, Dakota Hester, or if that's Bryson Vincent. The kick is up, and it is good. So the Eagle strike first, put three on the board. It was 32, that was Dakota Hester, the junior. In the 39-yarder, the Eagles on the board first, their first possession. We haven't seen Bryce Vincent in a while. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop and store online at academy.com. Find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. So obviously you want your first drive to hit a, hit a touchdown before the sophomore Lugo first possession. Uh, still a nice drive. Took up a little over four minutes. Moved the ball very solidly. Nothing too big, but do what he had to do and do what he had to do to get the ball to Jamie Brown. Yeah, absolutely. That drive featured Jamie Brown heavily. They moved the ball pretty well. Fortunately, they had to sell for a field goal, but nonetheless, you got to be happy with any points against a stingy Keller defense. So, Cade Whitemere back to return. A dangerous return, man. He fields it at about the 20. Brings it up the middle. Good return. He brings it bounce. Brings it up close to the 40. That's where we get to see the Indians offense for the first time. Quarterback Trey Guerrera has 15 total touchdowns on the year, 1,300 total yards. And they have a receiver with 600 yards and nine touchdowns in the six games he's played. Amarion Henry, number 11. Yeah, so he's a player to watch. Tenth in the area for 6A in total receiving yards. Average nearly 21 yards a catch. They go to the ground first play, or they throw it. Push out of bounds. That's Amarion Henry. Piolo, I almost wonder if that was backwards. It was, yeah, it was. So they pick up about eight on that play. Guerrero rolling right under in trouble, throws the ball away. Israel Kiwabonga had the pressure. Bring up a third and two. Back to Henry receivers.
They keep it on the ground. Pick up the first down, it looks like. And they do. That was Austin Coleman on the carry. Pick up the first down. It's Coleman again. Good looking run. Keller offense also playing with tempo, matching Eaton's. Guerrero dropping back, looking downfield. He has a man, and it is caught. That's Seth Henry getting into the end zone. Huge play by that Indians offense. A very nice <laughs> opening drive for them. They kind of nickel and dime a little bit, go short, go yeah, short. And then take their shot. Kind of lull, lull the defense to sleep, and then they're like, okay, yeah, now it's time. Play action pass. I mean, extra point good. That, that thing's gonna happen if you're defense and kind of like getting out of the way early, making yeah. sure Keller show, making Keller show their hand that they will. Yeah. Air the ball out. Really, we can't hear you, Chance. Starting from Keller sideline. <laughs> Got a decent looking crowd over on that side. Definitely filled out a little more since kickoff. I believe that's Guerrero's 16th total touchdown 16th of the year. 16th touchdown of the year. Passing. Yep. And for Seth Henry, it's just his second touchdown catch. Yep. Usually it's the other Henry receiver scoring. Don't know if they're related or not, but. Marion Henry, number 11, is the one with the uh, 10th in the um, area in yards, and he has nine touchdowns on the year. So, speaking of him, here he is on the kick coverage team down at the bottom of the screen. Good looking kick. Gonna be fielded at about the two, brought up. Good looking return. He has a chance to do something with it. That's Chris Anderson. He's running away from the defenders. He has a chance. Oh man. And speaking of Amarion Henry, he takes a great angle and forces him out of bounds. Prevents the touchdown. Incredible. Yeah, we'll talk about Christopher Anderson on the return. <laughs> I saw you shake your head. I didn't like it early. He had to go yeah, backwards oh yeah. the way he caught it, yeah. but it opened up and he hit it with the acceleration. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Once he saw the opening, accelerated through it. I think he got lucky a few guys kind of lost some footing. He kind of lost his own footing for yeah. a quick second. Yeah, yeah usually you uh, expect your player to either fair catch it, get it at the 25, or... Well, I mean, that's the only thing he could do because it wasn't in the end zone, but... Yeah, he brought it up, made an incredible return, and now the Eagles do have first down inside the um, Indians' territory at the 15. That's exactly what they needed as well, just with it after giving them the huge touchdown, long touchdown. There's debates going on. And there's about to be a delayed game call, but I also saw a signal from one official calling for the timeout that Coach Miller got off. So I don't think it's going to be a delayed game. So we go ahead and fish the talk to us. So they do grant them the timeout. Yeah, what, a, what a job though of setting up and helping your sophomore quarterback. Absolutely. Try to help him any way you can. We'll yeah, start, oh yeah. start your drive on the 15 yard line. Yeah, give him a very short field. Like, you're almost like, you're almost guaranteed points. You know? They hit at a, the very worst, you should be able to get three. Yeah, they hit a 39 yard field goal already. So, yeah, well within that range. Oh, yeah. Especially against a very stout defense, like we said. So, it's good. See if the Eagles' offense can capitalize. See, this is. Definitely white. They're gonna run it with 
Brown and then maybe get White Bear later. Yep, and speaking of Brown, making defenders miss, breaking tackles. He's inside of the five. That'll bring up another first down. It'll be first and goal coming up here for the Eagles. They keep it on the ground. That's J.B. Brown. He's wrapped up short of the goal line. That's one of those patient runs. So I'm going to wait on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he made Not, a nice little jump cut. Yeah, you don't see that as much in the, in the red zone. Only when you're especially inside the five, it's more of a steam head and get in there. Yeah, Still yeah. showing the patience. They give it right back to him. And they do mark it as a touchdown. So J.B. Brown gets in. Touchdown Eagles. They get on the board. They answer that Keller touchdown. And there is a player down. A Keller player is down on the field. That's Grant Simpson. Number 14, the linebacker. We will step away as they tend to the injured player. If you're trying to buy or lease a second property, I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs. Hi there, I'm Lily with Lily More Realty, and I'm a proud community member and Norwest ISD sponsor. For me, your experience is personal. If you're trying to buy or lease a second property, I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs. And we are back. Grant Simpson able to walk off the field under his own power, so we hope he is good. Eagles about to attempt the extra point. JB Brown continues to add on to his really nice season, his eighth touchdown on the ground. And the extra point is good, so the Eagles able to score their first touchdown in the game reclaim the lead eagles 10 keller seven get ready to go back to school and back to sport at academy sports and outdoors shop and store online at academy.com you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from nike adidas under armor and more I like I like the eagles not trying to get too cute down there or anything got you the the great kick return to the 15 just ride jb brown all the way in yeah, that was all J.B. Brown, right? Yeah, three, they, three, three carries. Yep. Yeah. Three yeah carries absolutely. No, no need to force the issue. Just give it to your bell cow. Let him get you the touchdown. Get you the points. And I know we saw Lugo run really early, but so far, we just keep giving it to Brown, giving it to Brown, yeah. giving it to Brown. You're going to get that DN to come in. Yeah. And later, you're going to yeah, pull it back. Keep or pull it. You're going to have it. Absolutely. You're right. Short kick. And the kick return does a smart move, letting it bounce out of bounds. So Keller will be able to start this drive at the 30, I believe. We saw the opening kick from Cade, the return from White Mirror. He had a nice return on his first attempt. And we saw pregame some of his numbers in the punt game. He's de definitely a very dangerous player, listed as a DB and wide receiver. And he's the returner. Just kind of one of those best athletes at your school that does it all. Yeah, he's uh, their starting corner. Saw him get a carry. Uh, I believe the first play of the game, they gave him a carry. Um. 
And yeah, his punt return yards, he has a lot of punt return yards. So he's a dangerous return man in addition to all those other positions he plays. He also runs track and field. One of those track stars. Don't know how well you know track so, Jojo but in 2019 he ran a personal best the 400 meters of uh, 54.62 seconds 400 meters for white mirrors so. so they hand the ball off good looking run here I believe that's Jackson Kratz in on the carry Keep it on the ground here. Big run. Took the whole Eagles defense to bring him down. That's Jackson Kratz again. Back to Kratz they go. There is a flag on the play though. See if that's coming back. When it comes out the snap like that, it's either offsides or illegal formation. It might be illegal formation because they did have a man in motion. So it is on Keller. Legal procedure, I missed it, but I likely had. Someone not set, two guys moving. Henry with the jet sweep, not much going there. Yeah, great job. Ben Roberts was all over it. Not fooled, not easy to block. Guerrero dropping back to pass, looking to scramble. Picks up a few, but drug down. Couldn't catch when Eagle was in there first, but last year, Kiwabunga had two sacks in the Keller game, and uh, Amula Lago also had one. So a couple of guys on defense had success a year ago. Third and 14 coming up here for Keller. And they're gonna run it. That's Kratz, good looking run, but it's not enough to pick up a first down. We'll see what <laughs> the Indians decide to do. Yeah, but it's enough to go for it. Yeah, exactly, you're right. Makes Let's it see if they forward. go, and it looks like they are lining up fast. It's fourth and six. And the Eagles gonna take a timeout, talk things over. I like that, it's pretty big. Yeah. Fourth down early. I know it's still the first quarter, but I mean, you can get a stop here. Kind of change the tide a little bit. They just took, that's their second timeout. Yeah, they had the one to avoid the delay of game after the big kick return. So the Eagles have one timeout remaining. It's still the first quarter. Really, you think about it. It feel like, feels like most teams don't really use their first half timeouts anyway, especially at this level. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> For the most part, they don't, no. Because you, you don't have yeah, the That's point. something you need more in the second half, like the end of the game. At least from what we've seen, we haven't seen a lot of like two minute offense at exactly. the end of the first half. So yeah, it might not, they might not need it, but I mean, this is most likely gonna be a pretty close game. So we'll see what they 
what happens. I don't know if we mentioned it yet, but yeah, this pretty much feels like the, the second place game yeah. in this district. Oh yeah. Unless someone topples the dragons. And they try to run for it. And they are short, so they do not get it. It's gonna be a turnover on downs for the Keller Indians. Eagles defense stands. Yeah, missed who actually made the tackle, but it was Brock Hayward, number one, who shot through there immediately. Kind of cha changed that play in the backfield. Hey, we talked about it last <laughs> night when we were watching, um, when we were calling the Northwest game. Gavino Ramos, he's a playmaker, and Brock Hayward, he's a playmaker. If you see a play being made at the line of scrimmage, just if you can't make out the number, just assume it's either Brock Hayward or Gavino Ramos. Those are two stout linebackers always around the ball. I believe that's JB Brown with the carry. It looks like he picked up about five on that play. So the Eagles with a huge chance to swing some momentum here. They get the uh, fourth down stop. They can drive and put up another touchdown. They're working. Lugo looking, swing pass as JB Brown again breaks the tackle. Running over defender still on his feet. Takes the whole Indian defense to bring him down. It looks like he is close to a first down. Another design swing pass. Get a few linemen out in front. One of them being big athlete Hunter Herb. I saw him take a defender down into his own sideline. <laughs> so they do give him the first down. Harris was sub in for Brown. So JB Brown taking a much needed rest. Lugo rolling right, looking downfield. That's Jaden Platt. If you're Seth Lugo, or I'm sorry, Noah Lugo, just Take, take what you get. You have to make plays. Just, you know, don't turn the ball over. Kind of be a game manager. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no need to try to force anything. You know, you have the lead. You're working. You're in business right now. You have a good-looking drive here. It's okay to nickel and dime this defense and slowly move down the field. Tire oh, out. Just tire out this defense. Let your defense get a rest because the way Keller runs with that up-tempo. Yep. You're right. So third and two coming up. J.B. Brown checks back in, and they do give him the ball. Good run. He stood up, though. Zach O'Day with the tackle. Good-looking tackle by the safety. This is the killer team that was 12th in the area and rush defense allowed. Well, they allow about 132 yards a game. Play action pass. Lugo looking downfield. Throws. I believe that's White Bear. Close to the sticks. That's complete. To number 88. Turn White Bear. That's the main. Second and short. Back to the ground they go. That's Lugo, quarterback keeper. Runs by a defender and he picks up a first down. Good looking run by Lugo. They'll stop the clock to reset the ball, but that's the end of the first quarter. And that's the end of the first. Eagles up top, 10 to seven. We will take a break and be right back to watching the Eagles versus the Indians on Vibe Live. can be overcome. Returns can be triumphant. The top of your game is well within reach. From comprehensive care to advanced research, everything you need to rehab, recover, and refuel your performance is in the playbook at Texas Health Sports Medicine. If you 
trying to buy or lease. I said your property. I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs. Hi there, I'm Lily with Lily Moore Realty, and I'm a proud community member and Norwest ISD sponsor. For me, and we are back. Start of the second here. Lugo looking downfield. He's taking a shot. Oh, no. And he throws an interception trying to take a shot to Christopher Anderson. Defender brings it out. And he steps out of bounds at about the 30. And that's what you cannot do if you're Noah Lugo. He threw it into double coverage trying to take a shot. We just were saying this. You can't turn the ball over. Couldn't quite see a uh, flag did come out on the return. I'm trying to see if that was Whitmere. But yeah, it was just it was never really there for yeah. Lugo. It seemed like yeah. they they wanted to come out of the out of the quarter and take a shot. Take a shot, yeah. But if it's not yeah. there, you gotta turn your head and check it down. Yeah, turn your head, check it down, or take off and run. There's no need to force a play. Yeah, you try to force a play. You had a good drive. Yeah. So there was a penalty on the return, so the Indians are going to get pushed back. We're talking during the commercial, the touches in the first quarter. Jimmy Brown had a, 11 touches in the first quarter. Eight rushes, three catches for a total of 62 yards. And a touchdown. So the Indians get the ball back. Guerrero rolling right. He's looking for Henry. He has him. Stiff armor defender. Ben Roberts is there and he throws him out of bounds. Ben Roberts and Chancellor Owens was also there as well. Play action pass. The ball is caught. And they say he has enough for a first down. That's a Marion Henry again. Back to the ground they go. Not much going there. Seen a lot of junior safety Aiden McKinnich in there. There were 15. Haven't seen him a bunch this year. Keller looking to take a shot. That's a Marion Henry. He catches it. And that's on Ben Roberts. He makes a tackle. So Marion Henry able to make a play on Ben Roberts. And the Indians are in Eagle territory. Play action pass. It's Henry again. Trying to make a play, but he's wrapped up and thrown out of bounds by Ben Roberts. A little aggression on that play. <laughs> Says, "Hey, man, you gonna burn me for a, for a big gain? I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna make you feel it." Ben Roberts, the Texas Tech commit, you know, he has a lot of pride out there. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't know, man. He's looking like Jamal Adams in that, on that coverage. <laughs> yeah, he looked like Jamal Adams on the, in that play on that coverage. <laughs> Keller O'Lyman lost a helmet. That's check out for a play. 74, the senior Caden Fox. So third and five play, and they do lose a lineman for this play. You're starting left guard. And you know they like to run. And they do run. I believe that's Austin Coleman. 
Doesn't look like he had enough to pick up the first down. And he didn't. So fourth and two coming up. But from what we've seen, the Indians are going to go for it. Yeah, Coach Strarlo and offense coordinator Tommy Keller. Offense coordinator Tommy Keller of the Keller Indians. Back-to-back <laughs> -back possessions kind of playing four four downs. But in this kind of no man's land. So big fourth down coming up here. They actually mark him back. So it's fourth and three, not fourth and two. Play action pass looking. He does have a man. And it's broken up. That's Ben Roberts making a play, stopping that drive. So he gives up the big play, and he makes a few key plays to stop that drive from ha from having anything happen. And you can see Ben Roberts is trying to make a play pretty much on the receiver, and Henry might have had a chance uh, to bring that one in. It seemed like the ball just kind of got past him and ended yeah, up hitting kinda, Roberts in the chest. It, it was kind of little. It was a little out there, yeah. I, w I, was, I was wondering. It kind of looked like both players could make a play on that ball. But a big break for the Eagles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. After the Lugo interception. And they just go back to J.B. Brown. Hunter Herb back there getting a pancake in the backfield. He's fun to watch. When you, <laughs> when you can find an offensive lineman, that's fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All-American four-star yeah. Texas A&M Yeah. <laughs> Looking to go deep. Short arms that one. Looking for White Bear. And he had him just kind of skipped it. So third and seven coming up here for the Eagles. We'll see if they can convert this one. I mean, that's there often. If you look, Charles White Bear commands a lot of respect. The, the, the defensive backs always way off on him because they know he can go deep and over the top. So anytime he wants to hit that stop, it is there. Looking for a screen pass, but it's nothing there. Just has to throw it into the dirt and end that drive. So unfortunately, the Eagles not able to capitalize on the fourth down stop. And they bring out the punt team to give it back. First punt of the night for either team. Killers gone for it on fourth down. Eagle, Eagles have the field goal on fourth. Is Dakota Hudson at the punt. And that's Cade Whitemere, the dangerous return man we were talking about with a good looking return. Good return there, setting up the. Some of the, the coaches next door wanted a possible late hit on that, but it was strange. <laughs> Whitmere, the way he stopped and kind of cut back, he's yeah. like making a football move, yeah. but he stepped on the white line. Yeah. I like the no call. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's trying to keep going. He did step out, and then the defender came and tackled him. So the handball off. Huge run here. Running away from defenders, that's Jackson Kratz. And the Indians score again. Reclaim the lead. Huge run from the running back on that play. Back-to-back -back huge plays for Keller. A great punt return by Whitmere, and then the run up the middle. And Eaton's up to this point done a great job containing the run, especially being there in the middle. Not, not great gap discipline on that one. It just opened up right up the middle. Yeah, absolutely. And the two scoring plays for the Indians have been huge plays. About a 50-yard run here, and they had about a 60-yard touchdown from Seth Henry early in the first quarter. And the extra point is good, so the Indians reclaim the lead back up top. They have 14. The Eagles have 10. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com. You can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. All at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. So the Eagles get a stop on defense. 
offense unable to get anything going. Punt it back. Huge punt return from Cade Whitemere. And then they strike one play with Jackson Kratz. Kratz, fourth touchdown of the year. He is the second leading back and carries on this team. I think the Eagles need to go back to J.B. Brown, try to churn it out with him, see if they can move the ball downfield. Get something going in the kick return game again. Last return, Christopher Anderson took it all the way back to the Indians 15. They do a short kick. The ball is live. Someone had to touch the ball to bounce. Yeah, the ball is live. It was very close to the sideline. I'm not sure if they're giving it to Keller or not. And it looks like they Okay, the defense was coming out, so no. Offense offense is gonna come out, so the ball stays with the Eagles. Yeah, because if anyone's touching the sideline and touches the ball, yeah, it's dead. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's it, dead. Yeah. And there's yeah. just not a chance that they tight roped it yeah, the way they were diving was, in. That was a very dangerous play though. Like you gotta get on that ball. That was that was those <laughs> kicks that we've seen that Northwest tries, Byron has tried. It's that little little pooch kick to the thirty, and you try to let them make the um, up man feel the ball. And we were just talking about that yesterday. They usually don't feel the ball, so they might not be as comfortable catching it as a kick returner who's back deep. <laughs> as I see Hunter Herb getting off of Whitemere with another pancake block. That's got to be his third or fourth pancake. I mean, honestly, he probably has a lot more. I wouldn't be surprised if he does, but that's the third or fourth well, one I've seen well, personally. Also, here you go. You were talking earlier about Logan Wright. There he is in the backfield. Yep. Yeah, we were touching on uh, J.B. Brown's touches early in the in the game, and we are asking for some Logan Wright carries to give J.B. Brown a few rests. And he has a good-looking carry there. Picks up a few on that play. Yeah, but not where you want to be with Lugo, a third and a passing down, really third and about seven. Yeah. Got to get White Bear or Platt involved. Speaking of White Bear, oh man, they're looking for him. And Lugo short arms it again. Yes. That's the second time he had White Bear wide open and he, on the little hitch route. And he just short arms it. So I'll bring up fourth down for the Eagles offense. And they bring in the punt team. And yeah, um, it didn't appear first, but they're kind of missing Fussel. Because those are two balls that Fussel would complete. Good looking punt here. Whitemere fumbles the snap. Fumbles the uh, catch. He is able to get back on it. Great punt. Great punt. It was muffed. He was able to get back on it because, you know, he was looking to make a return again. You can mark that down as a 45-yard punt. Great job of not getting Keller too great a field position, starting yeah. on the 28. Mm. Yeah, there the was it was back-to-back -back possessions. They had that hitch route, the, the stop, the curl, whatever you want to call it, to White Bear on this outside. I don't know if it's just when Lugo goes to his left, he's not as comfortable, but or if he's not seeing, maybe there's a hand in his way, and he thinks the defender's there. But it is. Yeah, it is the, there the, the play. It. The plays are literally identical. They're both right over here by the 40. He's wide open. The defender is giving him a lot of cushion. Huge play. It's caught. That's Trey Griffiths in on the catch. He's a player I have listed as a wide receiver and a D lineman. So the sophomore wideout making a huge play. And Indians going fast. That's Austin Coleman. 
big run, and there is a flag on a play. There was a little confusion up top on the field. And that flag came out late. In the area of a hold. Yeah, it's a sideline warning, yeah. So it's first and ten for the Indians. Looking for Henry. There's a little behind him. Chase Wiper was creeping up. Almost made a play on it. Ben Roberts was in the area as well. Seems like Ben Roberts is always in the area. Him and Brock Hayward, they're always in the area. If it's around, yeah, if it's inside the, the box, around the backfield. Hayward's there. Assume it's Hayward, if it's, it's anywhere else. the secondary, else. <laughs> it's going to be Roberts. Yeah, absolutely. Two players who fly around the field. So Guerrero looking downfield. He has a man wide open. And it's caught for a touchdown. I believe that's David Wagner. And on the catch, stretching the lead for the Keller Indians. Yeah, defense just lost track, able to slip out the backside. With this, the extra, the extra point. We'll have a little reverse of last year's score. And the extra point is good, so it is the last year's final score. It's 21 Keller, e Eagles 10. 546 left here in this first half. And you got to feel like the Eagles have to sustain a drive and put some points on the board, any type yeah. of points. I mean, yeah, the first few drives looked really nice. The opening drive was over 10 plays. I think it was around 12 plays when they got the field goal. Next possession, you got the nice kick return to the 15, took three plays, scored a touchdown there. And then it's been three and out. Th it's been another nice drive, interception. Interception, yeah. Three and out, three and outs. Yeah, that interception was a momentum killer, momentum changer. And we literally were saying it right, like maybe two plays before it, do not turn the ball over if you're Lugo. He did it, and now they haven't been able to really sustain much of anything out on offense. You got to wonder, is J.B. Brown getting a little tired? We haven't seen him a lot in the last few drives. Just stay ready with Coach Miller and Office Coordinator Timothy Baker. They they have a look they they have a page in that playbook full of trick plays. I wouldn't be surprised to try to pull something out. Try to give a big gain, get a momentum turn. Oh yeah, you do something like that, you're right. It'll get you the momentum. Give your uh team that spark they need. Decent return on that play that you're gonna get great field position at the 35 so we'll see if Lugo and the Eagles offense can get anything going and the touchback on um their last few drives like we said they could have picked up first downs twice on both drives if uh, Lugo could have got the ball out to White Bear so the drives haven't been just like no yards or whatever you want to call it that's a free play. Yeah, that's a free play. Did actually blow it dead? <laughs> yeah, the man was... The defender jumped off sides and kind of just froze. Didn't even try to, like, get back or anything. He kind of just jumped off sides and stood there like, Oh, no, I'm off sides. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it, wasn't, like, it, 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 it wasn't just one hand. It was his whole body. Yeah, his whole body <laughs> just standing there like, Uh, y'all gonna call this or what? <laughs> cool. <laughs> I always appreciate our, our spot in the box next to the coaches. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah, you can hear them going crazy over the bad pe bad penalty. Wow. Oh, so the, did they call a false start? They did. They say he was drawn a clock cross. By who? Hunter? Not Hunter Herb. You had a free five. Wow. Said you lose five. So the Eagles are pushed back five. JB Brown already picks that up. Gets them right back to the the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage. And the 
Eagles going fast. That's JB Brown again. Another good looking run there. And this Drug down by Peter Gasper. And this is where they need to be on these third downs. Third and five. Something you can you have a few options on obvious pass. And they just keep it on the ground. That's JB Brown. And he is thrown down. But there is a flag on the play. So they call holding on the Eagles. Keller's going to accept it? Would have been fourth. Fourth and like four, fourth and five. Yeah, fourth and four, probably. Or I guess there they, they declined it. Yeah, they declined Change it. Change your mind. So they do decline it. It's going to be fourth and five. And it looks like the Eagles' offense is staying out there. And this could make or break them. They get this obviously they uh continue to drive if they don't they give the indians marvelous field position they'll get the ball back at the 39. so we eat just one time out and they use it yeah yeah i think that's something you do need to talk over yeah that's a huge play here you can uh either keep the drive going or you can give them a chance to go up 28 to 10 right before the half yeah i didn't think they were just gonna blindly go for it with their sophomore quarterback who's kind of struggling it was more of maybe just line up look at him see what the defense comes out in you don't see as much you know hard counts try to draw them off sides but that would have been the time to do it the punt team does already head out yep Yeah, you have a good deal. Even though you've given up 21 points here in this first half, you do have a very good defense. You gotta trust in them. Trust that Brock Hayward and um, Ben Roberts and Kiwa Bonga, all them guys to make a play. Either get a stop, force a turnover, or do something. Yeah, what about the job Keller's done neutralizing, though, that eat D line. We haven't called Kiwa Bonga, Bulago. Yeah, other than Kiwa Bonga getting the pressure earlier. Another good looking punt. It's a bouncer. It's fielded Whitemere. Dangerous field of that punt. He's dropped for a loss. And that's kind of why I expected looking at his numbers. He's that punt return who's gonna return everything. It can kind of get him in trouble like right there. That was a dangerous play from him. Caught it on the bounce and was tackled instantly. Yeah, but another great, was about a 44, 45 yard punt yeah. from Dakota Hester. Yeah, pinning them. Pushed them all the now, way back to the 16. Now let's see if this Eaton secondary can kind of keep it together, not give up a big pass or last possession and open up in the middle on the run. Yep. Well, they're splitting them out wide and then just running right up the middle. There wasn't much going there. <laughs> Guerrero looking deep, trying to take another shot, and that's just that same play. And Chase Whitebear comes in late, breaks that one up. Almost had the interception. Roberts was also back there with the coverage. They're looking for uh, Marion Harry again. I feel like they've run that play like four or five times at this point. Yeah, I mean, the playbook Just, feels small, yeah. but effective <laughs> oh, yeah. with the run game. They, throw, they mix in an RPO, and it's like an extended RPO. Yeah. The quarterback would uh, dish it out late, and they're not afraid to look for those deep shots. That's why Henry averages 21 yeah, that, yards a catch. Yeah, 21 yards, nine touchdowns. Looking, oh, he just overshoots the receiver. Yeah, things intercepted. Wait, what? it was intercepted. It was intercepted. 
No way. It, it was Eric Wood. Eric Wood made a play on that ball. It looked like it was just going to sail out of bounds. It, it was miscommunication for Guerrero and his receiver. Guerrero was looking deep. Receiver ran a stop. And Eric Wood was reading it the whole way. Wow, incredible. So, just like we said, you punt it and you trust in your defense to make a play. And they do. They get the ball back. Lugo's in trouble. And he's able to throw that one away. Yeah, after a turnover, Coach Miller's aggressive. He wants to take shots after turnovers, after quarter breaks. Wants to have something deep there, but Lugo couldn't find it. Xavier Brown gets it. Struck down by Eli Brenton. Already feels like four down territory as soon as they got the interception where they are. Yeah. A little bit on Keller's side. Lugo in trouble, rolling left, looking downfield. He has a man. Oh, and it's almost intercepted. But the receiver did have a chance at it. That's, that's a tough spot. It's all what he wanted to do. Yeah. But yeah, it's a tight throw. You got to have that touch right over the defender, yeah. but not too high. Oh, I thought that was one maybe he should tucked. Yeah, it looked like he had enough kept. room to possibly run. Yeah, I would have liked him to run that one. Not try to force that yeah. over the defender's head. See if you get a few yards, make four down easier. Yeah. He's looking downfield. He has a man that's white bear. It, oh, and they say it's incomplete. Oh man, and unfortunately there's no replay in high school. Well, white bear can't believe it. <laughs> it looked like he brought that in. It looked like he brought that in. Can't, can't tell on our angle, but looked good. Yeah, it definitely looked good. It definitely looked good. Oh, man. So the Eagles unable to do anything with that turnover and to give the ball right back to the Indians on the 42 with 303 left here in this first half. Not much going on that run. few minutes away from halftime. We'll have performances of each team's bands, as always. We've got some time after. Peek at some scores in the area. I know Keller Central drew the short stick this week, heading to South Lake. Big game, Timber Creek and Byron playing each other. That's could be the last playoff spot between those two teams. never know maybe Central might surprise us maybe they get the upset over South Lake you never know anything can happen so third and seven coming up for this Indian offense they keep it on the ground as Coleman kind of loses his footing. Yeah, he had green grass. Yeah. He had a first for sure if he didn't lose it. Yeah. So luckily for the Eagles, he does trip. Only picks up three on that play. Bring up a fourth and four. And the Indians are keeping their offense out on the field. Oh. And I think they, Guerrero thought they had a free play, but no yeah, fly came out. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like um, like Chancellor Owens did jump early, but he might have not been in that neutral zone. So 
No flag. And Guerrero tries to take a, a, a free play shot, but there's not a free play. So it's going to be a turnover on downs for the Indians. Eagles offense gets it back with 120 left. Unfortunately, they don't have any timeouts. Yeah, there's no timeouts, but you're in a good position where you don't. It's not a dire. Clock stops when you reset the ball. Yep. And they keep it on the ground with J.B. Brown. Spin move. Another picks another tackle. It looks like he does have enough for a first down. They yeah, mark him a little, sh a yard short. So they mark him a yard short. Yeah, I don't know how it spun run, out. Incredible run by J.B. Brown. The first spin was for show. The second spin was for power. Yeah. <laughs> Quick pass here as Chris Anderson. He catches it. Makes a man miss. Makes another miss. He's down at the 30. A hey, two men miss and picks up that first down. It was not going to be denied on that play. Yeah, but they're going to get flat on a hold out there. Oh, man. So, unfortunately, Platt got caught holding. Wipes out a huge play by Anderson. Record South Lakes of 28 nothing in the first <laughs> half. In the first half, <laughs> oh, at the half. <laughs> Byron leading uh, leading Timber Creek 14-7 right now. Again, that's a, I'm a Timber Creek grad. That's that's a big rivalry game right there. Yeah. Platts coming in motion. Wide open he is, and they go. Lugo finds him. He picks up the first down, makes up for that holding call. Yeah, what a no job. one covered him. Yeah, in motion, you can see him coming across, but what a job by Lugo staying in there. He had pressure coming in his face. Yeah. Good play by Lugo. And the clock Good. is moving. Lugo looking. He has a man that's caught. He falls. They have to hurry up and yeah. get down and spike this. It doesn't like they know it. Now they know nope. it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Eaton's pleading for a second, but Keller's taking off the locker room. Oh my goodness. I love how we talked about not needing timeouts because of uh, two minute drill, and of course it happens. Of course it happens. I was looking at the clock when it said one time. I was like, no timeouts. I was like, that's funny. We were talking about having no timeouts, two-minute drill, and all that stuff. Man, uh, that's that's on the Eagles. They didn't really have much urgency Yeah, at the end of it, that drive. It seemed they weren't they familiar were, with the situation. Because, like we said, you usually aren't in a two-minute drill at the end of the first. With your backup quarterback. Yeah. Oh, man. So, unfortunately, they get no points on that drive. But to be fair, that would have been a pretty long field goal anyway, so you never know. But, but at least like to get a chance or get a Hail Mary throw up to Platt or a White Bear. But regardless, 21-10 yeah. Keller after a half. If you stick around, we have performances by both marching bands. You're watching the Eagles versus the Indians on Five Live. Injuries can be overcome. Returns can be triumphant. The top of your game is well within reach. From comprehensive care to advanced research, everything you need to rehab, recover, and refuel your performance is in the playbook at Texas Health Sports Medicine. If you're trying to buy money, I said your property, I can be the one Hi there, I'm Lily with Lily More Realty, and I'm a proud community member and Norwest ISD sponsor. For me, your experience is personal. If you're trying to buy money, sell your property, I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, performing their 2021 contest show entitled, And So It Goes, Sit Back and Enjoy, the Killer High School Marching Band.
Community Chopper Incorporated, Blue Dot Club, Deep Blue Graphics, Doug and Nick Porter Super Fans, Enclave Pinto, Homer Family, Modern Geo Science, Sunbelt Pinto, Team NWJ, and Watercrest Pool. Best of luck to the Eaton High School Band at the competition this season. Killer has been marching man and the team, administration, faculty, students, parents, and fans for their overwhelming support of our program. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Killer, the Killer High School Marching Band!
with exciting, unique, and contemporary original music. The first movement, imagination and reality. Bar lines are immediately blurred by way of alternating 4-4 four -four and 3-4 four bars, making it hard to determine where reality begins. This movement has high energy effects that lead to a powerful impact. Movement 2, clarity. Finally, we find clarity, both figuratively and literally. With this incredible arrangement of the popular dead tune by the same name, Movement 3, Blurred Lines. As the show comes to a close, we find a way to discover clarity within the blurred lines that we see every day. Our featured soloist will be Abigail Shields, Abner Perez, Penny Reed, Katie Hogan, Ned Wood, Tara Peterson, Amy Padilla, and Chris Pavella. This year's drum majors are Brian Clark, Adam G, and Allie Hill. The lines between imagination and reality are blurred.
triumphant. The top of your game is well within reach. From comprehensive care to advanced research, everything you need to rehab, recover, and refuel your performance is in the playbook at Texas Health Sports Medicine. And we are back. Start of the second half, just about to start. Eagles trailing 21 to 10 at the half. And man, what a blunder at the end of that half from the Eagles offense. For that first half, he definitely left a lot of points on the board on a few different situations. You had the Lugo interception early. That was. No, they weren't like in the red zone really, but they were on the 30. I yeah. think we threw an interception and threw it into the end zone. Yeah, uh, that's the points on the board. You get a chance for the half, maybe to make something happen, get at least uh, a shot at some points. Uh, just unable to convert. Went up seven three, or actually went up ten, ten seven. Ten went, seven. went up ten seven, and fourteen unanswered from the Indians. And the Indians do get the ball start of the second half as well so Eagles defense need to get a stop see if they can come back in this game trailing by 11 I mean looking at the first half stats Lugo was 7 of should we refresh one more time make sure because I don't know if we're caught up there we go Lugo was 9 of 18 61 yards in the pick just a lot of short passes in the one blunder. Guerrero, 8 of 14, 160 yards, two scores in the one pick. We've been seeing him connecting those deep shots. Yeah. And Keller expecting a onside kick there. Most of their players up front trying to catch it. Jimmy Brown carried the ball 15 times for 69 yards in the first half or in a score. But other than that, you can know the rushing. Lugo, 2 for 13. Jamari Harris, 3 for 6. And Logan Wright, 1 for 3. Got to find a way to produce offense somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the Eagles are definitely missing Tyler Fussell, who's in the concussion protocol. See if their defense can get a big turnover or something, give this team a spark. Much needed spark at that. First play, Kelly keeps it on the ground. Not much going on that play. That's Jackson. Jackson Kratz, the player who had that long 50 yard run earlier. Keep it on the ground here. Keller Lineman lost his helmet. Again. That's 55, Parker McElwee. 
He loses his helmet, has come off on his third down. That's both times it's been on third down. So yeah. <laughs> lost well, last helmet. time I think he lost it on the actual third down, so he came out for the fourth down play. Guerrero dropping back. He has a man that's complete. That's Jackson Kratz running by a defender, picking up the first down. Parker McKill Kellaway comes back in. Kind of a bad snap. Corrals it, hands it to Jackson Kratz. Picks up about six on the play. Eagle down. There is an Eagle player down. And we'll take a break as they tend to the injured player. If you're trying to buy bunnies, I sell your property. I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs. Hi there, I'm Lily with Lily More Realty, and I'm a proud community member and Norwest ISD sponsor. For me, your experience is personal. If you're trying to buy bunnies, I sell your property. I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs. We are back. Grant Thefford, the injured player, able to walk off the field under his own power. So second and seven coming up for the Keller Indians. A little run RPO. Guerrero keeps it, doesn't pick up much. Another third down chance for this defense, try to get off the field. Gave up third third down conversion moments ago on a just kind of a quick out to the inside receiver. Yeah. Well, I mean, from what we've seen from Keller, more than likely they're probably gonna go for it on fourth, so they do probably need to get a stop here and on fourth down as well. Jet sweep. That's a Marion Henry. Big play here. He picks up the first down. Push out of bounds at about the 30. But Eagles playing pass. I was watching Eric Woods here, the close side safety. Soon the ball was snapped. He was backpedaling. Had no idea the ball was coming right in front of him. Yeah. Hand the ball off, that's Kratz. Picks up a few on the play. ball off that's Jackson Kratz running out of real estate he doesn't get anything there is a flag on the play and credit that junior safety mentioned him earlier Aiden McKinnon she's the one forcing that one to keep going outside and outside not let him get up field he might have drew a hold also so they march back the Indians offense Still going to be second down. Second and 17. Looking downfield. Had a man and he drops it. I think that was Trey Griffiths to the two. 
I think it was one of those he was a lot more open than he thought, so he tried to turn his head and yeah. start to see where the defender was coming from. Try to run with it. Try to run before he caught it. Huge Completely. for Eaton to get a third and 17 defensively. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They hand the ball off. That's Kratz. Nothing going there. And it looks like the Indians might be leaving their offense on the field. It's, it's such a weird area because I don't know if you if you punt for a touchback, it's a net of 16 yards, which is the same as going for it. I mean, I mean they've went for yeah. it multiple times throughout and this game. I, don't, I they, wonder if they've do had success in the vertical passing game. Yeah, have they? Wonder if they even do punt. Guerrero scrambling, and he's not going to pick it up, so the Eaton defense holds. I don't, I don't, I don't it know. Looked like it, was, <laughs> it looked like it was kind of a QB draw because he took it's, off immediately. I don't, I don't know what they are. They're, the goal is in a situation play like that. And yeah, because it seemed like the pass rushers were allowed to get to him. Yeah, it, it kind of looked like it looked like a QB draw. It looked like a design run almost. Because he didn't even try to look for any receiver. Quarterback keeper is Lugo. Picks up a few on that play, and that Eagles offense needs to get something going. Their defense has made a few plays throughout this game. Trying to get them back in it. The Eagles offense has been unable to capitalize. That's J.B. Brown. Huge run here. Running away from defenders. Whitemere has an angle on him. And he's going to be unable to catch him. That's an Eagles touchdown. J.B. Brown with a huge run. No flags. 66 yards for Brown's second score of the game. Huge just... run. That's, that's your... That's your superstar player. You have to put the team on his back and let him get you back in this game. So you keep running behind that line. They're going to open up these holes, and J.B. Brown's going to find him with his speed. Once he gets through it, you're not catching him. And I say you're not catching him. And by and golly, Cade Whitmere was close. Yeah, Cade Whitmere, was. Cade Whitmere had some speed Cade now. Whitmere was guarding the you receiver said track star. closest yeah, to you us. said he's a track star, yeah. <laughs> he showed off his track speed on that play. And the Eagles leave their offense on the, on the field. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a flag oh man trying to go for a two-point conversion so they're only well, down by three but late Shelley didn't know they were going for two and he came off the field and then he was supposed to stay on the field yeah, he, he was just standing he was standing around the, the yeah. 15 yard line when the ball was snapped yeah I was wondering <laughs> I was trying to figure out if that was like supposed to be a trick play or pulling the old longest yard play well yeah so more than likely yeah Keller's gonna decline that and the uh, two-point conversion is no good. So Eaton does cut into the lead, but they still trail 21 to 16. 7.30 left here in this third quarter. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop and store online at academy.com. You can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. so much small things that Eaton's messed up today that's, that's really hurt him. Yeah. The, the end of the half blunders, not kind of being able to hurry up, spike it, not knowing the clock situation, not being ready for the two-point situation. Uh, they almost had a mess up on the kickoff, or they almost, Keller almost recovered. Yeah. Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the, the secondaries had some blunders, got guys behind them. It's been a lot of small things that they got to tighten up. Yeah. On the bright side, it hadn't been a heavily flagged game. It has not. Especially not. Cause after especially last night. After <laughs> last time, just about, especially after last night. Had probably a total of 20 plus flags last night. Very undisciplined ball. Keller's yeah, still not like, expecting a deep pit kick or they're fine with a deep kick. And then they go the tournament around the 16 yard line. And they do kick it deep. That's going to be Whitemere fielding it right up the middle. He does kind of have a wedge. He splits to the right. 
and he's drugged down. Good beer brought down by White Bear. Let's chase Jeez. White Bear in on the tackle. So we'll see if the Eagles defense can get another stop here. Keller hands the ball off. Not much going there. Ball's complete. That's Amarion Henry wrapped up and brought down immediately. That was Nathan Hankins making the stop. Good tackle by the cornerback coming up and tackling Amarion Henry before he can get anything going. Third and four coming up for the Keller Indians. Huge play by the Eagles defense. They get the stop. So the Eagles get the ball back. Good return from Ben Roberts. JB Brown steps out of bounds after a good run. And the ball off or he fakes it that's Lugo wrapped up and brought down at the 30 second and seven coming up Quarterback keeper, that's Lugo again. Third and th third and six coming up. Lugo looking downfield. He throws it. It's intercepted. And they give it to him. So Lugo throws an interception again. I think that was Zach O'Day making a play on the ball. There was no receiver in the area. Lugo makes a very costly interception again with the Eagles in, in business. Looking to get some points and come back into this game. Keep 
the ball on the ground is fumbled. Eagles have it. They're in the end zone for a touchdown. Eagles defense gets the turnover. They score. We apologize. We're having some technical difficulties. We're back on air right when the big play happens. Eagles defense, or, or Lugo just threw an interception, which pinned the Keller offense deep. First play, they hand the ball off. It's fumbled, recovered by the defense, and they get into the end zone. Scoop and score, touchdown for the Eagles to uh, reclaim the lead. Yeah, absolutely. Huge job by the Eagles. They're unable to catch everything that happened there, dealing with the technical difficulties. Again, sorry, but back on air. Eagles up 22-21. The defense getting a score. I was getting the feeling the defense is going to make a big play like that. Here's the two-point play. Two, it looks like they're going to mark him short. That was Lugo. And they do. So, unfortunately, the score is going to stay at 22-21. to 21. Eagles out on top. First lead since 10 to 7. Two third quarter touchdowns. And yeah, and they, what a complete turn in the momentum. Was trying to catch on the replay. Still, who it was who made the play. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> wow. Incredible. Got to completely just guess. I would guess Brock Hayward. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like we said, you got to. Got chalk it. It's most likely him. <laughs> He's a little distracted. Let's see, see if uh, we get some help from Dallas Morning News to catch us up. So that was a um, pretty wild turn of events. The Eagles defense gets a stop. They force the punt. Ben Roberts gets a big return. About a 20 25 yard return from Ben Roberts. JB Brown gets a. Uh, good run Lugo gets a few good runs and then it's third down and Lugo takes a shot and um, Zach O'Day the, the DB the safety for Keller makes an interception and then first play Keller's offense runs the ball running back fumbles and then Eagles jump out on it and they are able to fall into the end zone and that's how we got here. 439 left in this third quarter. According to Dallas Morning News, the fumble touchdown was Ben Brock Roberts. Oh, Ben Roberts. Okay. Yep. So Ben Roberts or Brock Hayward. This is gonna be one or the other. Yeah, and then touching back on the Lugo interception. It was it was one of those plays almost similar to the one that Guerrero threw Guerrero threw earlier. Uh, yeah, little, miscommunication. Uh, uh, miscommunication. Yeah, receiver, miscommunication. Receiver stopped. Yeah. He thought it was going deep, and yeah. so it looked like a throwaway. Yeah, and then the, the, and then the defensive uh, back able to make a great able, play. Yeah, able to get one foot in because in high school and college you only need one foot, so he gets the one foot in. They give him the interception. That's Henry again, unable to get away from White Bear. Wraps him up after a gain of about four. Rare looking. Wrapped up and brought down. That's a sack. That's Kiwabunga. And it looks like Chancellor Owens was able to get in on the fun as well. You just feel the energy shifting. Oh, yeah. In this place all of a sudden. Yeah. First sack of the night for this Eagle defense. Kiwabunga had two last year against Keller. It's his third of his career. With third and 13 coming up here. I'd like to remind you, Cuba Bunga started last season as a tight end. He wasn't yeah, always a defensive end. Him, yeah. <laughs> Scarrera looking. He has a man that's caught. Unable to get away from the defender. It looks like that was Austin Coleman. Tackled well short of the first down. Bring up a fourth down. It's going to be fourth and eight. Andrew Perkins getting out there on the coverage. Now, as I was saying, there's no way Keller goes for this, right? There's I mean, they've been going for it, but yeah, you're right. This is wouldn't be very smart to go for it right here, in my opinion. I, I and they don't, do break I, out the punt team. I don't think Coach Strollo uh, subscribes to the uh, who's the coach in the college now who never punts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his name, but yeah, it's always like a 76 to 59 score. Play blown that dead. play's blown dead. 
Well, last time they did punt, Ben Roberts took it back 30 yards. Yeah. I think they got a delay of game. So we'll see if Ben Roberts can make another play. Short punt, takes a bounce. Ben Roberts feels it. Makes two men miss. Still on his feet, makes a third man miss. Makes him fall to the ground. Great return here for Ben Roberts. There is a flag on the play though. Still on his feet. Incredible return from Ben Roberts. My goodness. That's a player that wants to win this game. Yeah, I, this is where football should get a little subjective, and they should just, just pick up the flag because yeah, how great man, the return you, yeah, was. Yeah, man, you know what? Just <laughs> let it go. I, I, like I said, I, don't, I think it was last week. I said, you know what? When a play like that happens, you just got to let it go, man. But he, he shook or broke seven or eight tackles on his own. So He, how, made, some, he made someone if, fall if, if he's to making the all ground. Those, if he's making all those defenders miss, where did his blockers have time to hold or man. block in the back as there is a down Indian? Man, incredible return. We will take a break. Or we'll actually keep it here. Try to catch up a little bit. It's been a really wild last few minutes after it got yeah. quiet for a little bit. It felt like the scoring for both teams kind of quiet towards the end of the second quarter, towards most of early in this third quarter. And then Eaton gets two scores, one defensively. Yeah. Then a big J.B. Brown busted one. Yeah, a lot of few big plays in the last few minutes. Seems like he's all been on special teams and uh, defense for the Eagles. Ben Roberts been on all of the big plays. <laughs> Two returns, the fumble recovery. The special teams for Eaton has been a real difference maker in this game. Don't forget in the first half, Christopher Anderson's return to the 15, set up the early eagle touchdown Use your special teams and your defense really helping out your offense yeah well I mean when you have your uh, starting quarterback out you need you need all hands on deck you need everyone to contribute which is what's been happening for the Eagles and the injured player looks like he is sitting up, up. Well, he's back to his feet. Ben Is that Roberts. Ben Roberts? Yeah, so Ben Roberts was shaken up after the huge return. That's a player the Eagles cannot lose. We hope he's okay. He's walking off the field under his own power. That's one of their best players. They cannot lose him. Both... The Keller staff and this Eaton staff both kind of wear the same navy blue. Yeah, they do. So I thought the, the training staff out there was Keller's. So, first and 10 from the 31. Lugo rolling right. It's complete. I believe that's Jaden Platt on the reception. I think Ben Roberts just pretty gassed after that return. Oh, yeah. Took a lot of hits. But on that play there, I really like that. That's one of those simple passes we talk about. Get, get Lugo on the run. Get him a big target in front of him. <laughs> Hunter Herb with another pancake block. Just threw a defender to the ground. He's going to have a, a lengthy highlight tape just from this game. So third and four coming up. Lugo keeps it, fakes it to Brown. Looks like he is short of the first down. Chris Anderson is a little slow to get up. He just got a little rolled up on his backside. Fourth and one. He Baiting, and then I don't think much of a debate. Coach is throwing out the signals.
And they do go for it. They hand it off to JB Brown. It's going to be close. And they give it to him. It's a first down. Likely last play of the third quarter. That's Lugo, quarterback keeper. He has green in front of him. Good run from Noah Lugo. Zach O'Day with the big tackle to kind of save that one, grabbing it by the ankle. Ends our quarter. Who had the interception earlier? And that with that, we are at the end of the third. Eagles up 22 to 21. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Injuries can be overcome. Returns can be triumphant. The top of your game is well within reach. From comprehensive care to advanced research, everything you need to rehab, recover, and refuel your performance is in the playbook at Texas Health Sports Medicine. If you're trying to buy a lease, sell your property, I can be the one you call for all your real estate needs. Hi there, I'm Lily with Lily More Realty. And I'm a proud community member in Norwest ISD sponsor. For me, your experience is personal. If you're trying to buy your money, sell your property, I can be the one you call. And we are back. Start of the fourth. Third and one coming up here for the Eagles offense. Hand the ball off. That's JB Brown. Good run. Picks up the first. And this is where you want to be if you're the Eagles. Driving, have a lead, you can add on to your lead. Just ride the back of JB Brown. Let him do all the work. Carry you to a win. Lugo getting in on the action. Huge run. He has nothing but green grass in front of him. And he gets to the end zone. Huge touchdown by Noah Lugo. And turned on the boosters on that one. I don't think we knew Lugo, <laughs> Noah Lugo had those kind of wheels. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, on that last play before the end of uh, the third, you can kind of see on that quarterback keeper, he has some speed to him. Noah Lugo has some speed. Oh, boy, and he used it on that play. So the Eagles offense was stagnant for a while. They got that boost from Ben Roberts and now they've been they're they've back they've reclaimed the lead and they're able to score again. Huge extra point makes it a two possession game. Yep, Dakota Hester in for the extra point. And he gets it. So now the Eagles lead 29 to 21. 11-11 left here in this ball game. So now with Keller scores, they do need a two-point conversion to tie the game. 19 answered in the second half for Eaton. Trail 21-10 at the break. Well, it's been a, um, that's basically the story of the game. Eagles took the lead, then they gave up 14 unanswered. Then now they've done 19 unanswered. And that's how we've gotten here at this point. A couple of long touchdown runs for J.B. Brown and now Noah Lugo. No, Lugo looked like he wanted he, to yeah, go. Yeah, he was done. Yeah, he's like, all right, that's the ball game. I'm going to the locker room. Ran all the way to the <laughs> locker room door. That's the visiting locker room, too. Yeah. 
was confused from last week. Yeah, that, I was about <laughs> to say that. He was in there last week. Deep kick. No man back. Bounce, bounces into the end zone for a touchback. So the Indians offense will get to work from the 25. Ben Roberts back out there already. That's great for the Eagles. Oh. Indians try to run a reverse. And the ball is dropped. Bad, bad pitch. They were trying to get the ball to Marion Henry. And the Eagles defense gets another huge turnover. Keller trying to get a little cute there. And it bites them. Anthony B, a junior defensive tackle, comes away with it. Again, yeah, what a gift for Eaton. Yeah, oh yeah. Trying to run some trickery with it, and it just, it just looked awkward the whole way on that yeah. pitch. Yeah, it did. Almost, yeah, it almost like, like one of them didn't expect it. Yeah, it kind of like hit him in the shoulder pad or something, and then the Eagles defense had great penetration, so there was a defender right there, J.B. Brown, jump cut. Not much on that play, but he's trying to make something happen. So the Eagles are up 29-21. They have the ball on the 19. We saw the kicker hit a 39-yarder to start the game. So you got to imagine as long as they don't turn the ball over, they have guaranteed points here. It can add on to their league. Lugo quarterback keeper spins. Wrapped up and brought down. Lugo starting to feel it a little bit. I was just man. say that last run gave him a lot of confidence. Yeah. And really, last few runs, he's starting to spin, do a little start, bit of moves. Starting to see after he threw an interception, his team immediately got him back. You know, got his back. Yep. Back to JB Brown, they go. Good run here. He's going to be close to the first down. We'll see where they mark him. And they do give him a first down. Mark it at the 11, so there is another chance for a first down inside the one. They can't get a first down without scoring. But I mean, if you're the offense, you want to score. That's JB Brown running. Good run. Zach O'Day on the stop. Zach O'Day is a player we've called a lot today. So O'Day and the line, senior linebacker Grant Simpson in there. Lugo quarterback keeper, he fools the defense. Gets into the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the game. Throws a little flex on him. He did. Really feeling it. His, hey, his hey, second hey, touchdown. Oh, yeah. You score, another, you score two touchdowns. Yeah, you, you start feeling yourself a little bit. And this game has completely flipped. Completely. Two touchdown lead at halftime. It really seems like Keller was in control of this game. Yeah. Dakota Hester in for the extra point. He nails it. Flag. There is a flag on the play. I'm not even sure how you hold as a defense. Yeah, <laughs> on a kick. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't see how you hold on a on an extra point as the defense. It's interesting, but 
I think the, the only way, I think you can hold the lineman down, right? I think that would be it. If you don't like let them get out of their stance. Uh, yeah, if you hold them down and try to let someone like jump over, and maybe block it, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Other than that, I don't. Yeah, that's I don't see something how. that's not called very <laughs> often. <laughs> So, nonetheless, the Eagles add on to their lead. It's 36 to 21. And now have a 15 point lead. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop and store online at academy.com. You can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. Remember at halftime, I talked about uh, Eaton needed someone else to help in this rushing attack and find some other offense. Well, it's been Noah Lugo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Noah Lugo doing what Tyler Fussell usually does. Lugo up to 10 carries, 80 yards, and two scores, complimenting JB Brown's 23 for 169 and two scores. Incredible. Now all four offensive touchdowns coming off the ground, one defensive touchdown. And I mean, this is a team. You got Hunter Herb, you got JB Brown, you just run the ball, turn it out. You might be able to get out of here with a win. And this defense is playing lights out as it is, so Indians might not have a chance to come back in this game. Yeah, some people, you know, some people like to debate the whole momentum thing, but we saw it here. Yeah, tonight. no, that's a real thing. It's we, a real thing. The momentum completely changed. Strangely, after the Lugo interception. <laughs> yeah. Because right after that, the, the fumble score by Roberts and, and all eaten the past 20 minutes. Yep. Guerrero dropping back, looking. He has a man. Is it caught? And they say it is. That's a Marion Henry again. Called his name a lot today. Third and one coming up. They mark him short of the first down. And that defense is in that backfield. They do not pick up a first down. Yeah, really close, but going to be tad short fourth down. Bunga, Chance Owens, 97, Caden Cochran in there, big 6'1", 234 junior. So big fourth and one coming up right here. Clock is moving, 730 left here in this ball game. This might be the ball game. Oh, horrible snap. Guerrero able to growl and he's in trouble. You wrapped up and dropped in the backfield. Eagles defense gets that stop. It looks like that was Kiwabonga who was able to throw Guerrero to the ground and un make, force him to uh, turn the ball over on downs. Yeah, Kiwabonga all over that. The, the missed snap off of Guerrero's hands and Kiwabonga went right by left tackle Peter Gasper. And yeah, that snap just like it like almost went over Guerrero's head. He kind of bobbled it. He caught it. Tried to spin and make well, something happen, but he, well, he ran the run to his right. But Kiwabunga first was play, that's JB Brown, and that's basically the dagger right there. JB Brown getting in the in the end zone. First play. Eagles out on top, forty-two to twenty-one. Extra point pending. 7-16 left here in this ball game. You blink and it's a 20-point blowout. And this game is a lot closer than what the score is indicating currently. This, this extra <laughs> point is about could make it 33 unanswered. <laughs> <laughs> and the extra point is good. I'm laughing because I'm looking at the student section and they were just like... Waving by to Keller, who was kind of taunting them earlier when they had the lead. 
That student, that Keller student section got pretty small pretty quick, huh? Oh yeah, they've kind of, they've, yeah, they're 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 exiting. They've seen enough. Yeah, this is a game that it looked like Keller was, they were in control of it for a majority of it, and then Eaton just, they just erupted incredible and you know this is a team who came back i believe the, the score was what 31 to 8 38 to they yeah. had i believe they were down the, 31 to 8 the hebron game. against hebron yeah and they came back and won that so this is kind of a a comeback team in, in that game game winning touchdown ben roberts yeah and ben <laughs> roberts so exactly ben roberts is the catalyst been, yeah he's ignited this team today And you got to think, we said this is a battle for number two in the district. I mean, obviously this game was a lot closer than, and the game is still, there's still seven minutes left in the game. The game's not completely over, but you look at the score right now, it's 43 to 21. I mean, that's kind of similar to what South Lake was able to do to them. I know you can't say, oh, this team did this to this team, but you never know. Eaton does play South Lake later this month. We'll see who is the true number one team in this district on that night. Two weeks from tonight, we'll be here eating in South Lake. I'm excited. But yeah, I know a lot of people say you can't say, oh, Team A played play Team C this way, so you can they're, they're really even. Not. You can't, you can't. But as it is, you can't kind of, you can't kind of look at it like, you know what? They were both able to blow them out. Maybe it should be a somewhat of a close game, you know? At least in my my mind, I like to look at it like that. Remember the the common opponent they have right now. It'll change because they're in the same district, but yeah, it's Broswell. It's Broswell and Keller beat him by four, and Eaton lost by ten. Yeah, that's the one loss in the season. That a little extracurricular activity from number fifty-seven, Tim Carlson, bumping into Drew Perkins after that play. That's probably that frustration after giving up. 33 unanswered points and trailing here in this game a game you probably felt like you were well in control of you might be getting away here leaving here with a win really all these touchdowns are coming really about 10 minutes to game time huge oh play it looks like he caught that and he did I believe that was uh, Marion Henry again Play action pass, Guerrero in trouble. Wrapped up and brought down. Eaton scored their first touchdown in the third quarter with 7.30 remaining. And their latest touchdown came with 7.16 remaining in the fourth. So really, like I said, about that's, that's 12 to 13 minutes of game time yeah. <laughs> that they were able to score. 33 uh, points. Yeah. And they've all been like huge plays. About a what? 25 yard run from JB Brown. Lugo had, I believe, what was it, a 30, 40 yard run? And then he J did have that. He did have that where they got into the uh, deep in the um, the red zone. It was J like J a five J yard run. JB Brown's with 66, that one. That 66? One. Yeah. Guerrero scrambling. Good looking run. And that's something we haven't seen a lot from Guerrero. He has, I believe he has 269 yards rushing on the year. He has uh, extra three rushing touchdowns, I believe, as well. He hasn't really used his legs today. I mean, normally average about six carries a game uh, and six yards a carry. Normally a little bit of a threat with his legs, but you're right, he has not been. Uh, uh, factor with those at all yeah not at all and honestly I mean up until yeah he hasn't really needed it they had much success through the air they had hit a few deep throws deep balls another RPO that's Henry again throws off white bear or excuse me that was Nathan Hankins and really I'm not sure why Keller went away from those deep shots so working so successfully they were yeah. able to get a lot of one-on-ones uh, with a player coming across the middle 
Yeah, I believe in that first what, half. Three, three of those in the first half, which is what kind of gave them the lead, really. And they did go away from it. Trying to take a deep shot. Ball falls incomplete. Eric Wood was back there in coverage. Four minutes left. Eat. About to secure another victory. Third win in a row. Third blowout in a row, I believe. Yeah, we beat Byron 45-10 last week. We beat Ridge the week before that. 42-21 in there. 43-21 uh, to here. But, I mean, this... I mean, this game was a lot closer than what the most likely what the final score will entail. It's a close game for most of the game. As Keller looks to take a shot, that yeah, that's pass interference. He just jumped into the the, the receiver. I feel like he could have possibly made a play on the ball. I I couldn't get a on who the DB was. Wood or Hankins? I missed it too. I think it was Wood. I think yeah. I think it was Eric Wood. Maybe he didn't feel like he could make a play on the ball, so he just it's smarter to give up the 15 instead of the possible touchdown. Eaton's going to get out of here with this win. Yeah, I don't know why they were marching like it was a spot foul at first. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> it's, you should be at the 22. <laughs> so Eaton's going to have a Thursday game next week against Keller Central. Who's taking on South Lake tonight. You want an update on that? I would like one. <laughs> Last I checked, it wasn't good for Central. Oh, I got it right here. It's 56 to nothing. Third quarter right now. I mean, that's kind of what South Lake has done all year. Our boys at uh, Byron Nelson still in a close game with Timber Creek. That game's 35 28 in the fourth. Byron on top. Guerrero in trouble, rolling right. Kiwabunga is on his tail, forces him to run out of bounds. Third and 11 coming up here. Guerrero trying to scramble. Runs out of bounds. Andrew Perkins forces him out. I love how uh, right when we say <laughs> Guerrero has not used his legs today. Whip rips off like four runs on this one drive. Actually, Byron just scored again though. I think on a pick six to go up 42-28. Wow. Yeah, Jacob Porter, the quarterback for Timber Creek, came into the game with 16 touchdowns and one pick on the season. He's going three tonight against the Byron defense. Wow. That's Guerrero trying to take a shot. Ball falls incomplete. That was fourth down, so that's going to be another turnover on downs for the Indians. 
But that Byron box score, Jacob Wilson, 24 of 36, 366 yards, four scores, one pick. Mm, incredible. Giordano with two touchdown runs, but still, they're not running the ball much. Just six to yeah. six. <laughs> Remember we were touching, we were talking about that last week when they played uh, Eaton. They did not run the ball that much. It's like watching Mike Leach at Mississippi State. Have <laughs> yeah. your quarterback throw it 50 times a game. Yeah. J.B. Brown spinning. Runs away from the defender. The coach let him know right there. You need to try to stay in bounds. Yeah, yeah. He said it was his bad. I don't know one of the Keller students actually get one of those cowboy hats. They all brought them? How does that work? <laughs> So just looking ahead next week. I know we're here just once, right? Just one game next week for us. Yeah, next week we're just here he once. Here at the Northwest IC Stadium. Yep. To be Byron and Fossil. Byron and Fossil plays next week. J.B. Brown <laughs> refusing to go down. He got to just go down, man. Don't want to risk injury. He, he, he was dancing out there. And yeah, almost dancing. ran out of balance and remembered last second. Yeah, play. then he stiff arms, jumps back, jukes a guy. Was just for a while, just straight up running sideways, not even trying to go forward, just staying in balance, killing clock. <laughs> Incredible run. I feel like I say that eight times a game when he runs the ball. He's over 200 on the ground. Yeah, so we'll see Fossil Ridge again next week against Byron. Fossil Ridge team we saw take on Eaton. Eaton blew them out in that game. Ridge off this week. Taking their bye week, so get the extra week of preparation for Byron. And this Keller team will be taking on Timber Creek next week, who's playing Byron tonight. Like I said, everything's really shaping up almost exactly how last year went. Byron loses those first two games big to South Lake and Eaton, and then they can rattle off, have a chance to rattle off the last four. Because uh, they look like they beat Timber Creek this week and then get Fossil next week, a team that's struggling. I still, this Keller team, they still, they still been bad. I mean, they, this was a really close and good game for really more than half of it, 30 to 35 minutes. It was just the last kind of <laughs> 10 to 15 got away from them. Yep. Yeah, this is a game we were looking forward to because we saw Keller. They had, like we said, they, their defense was stout. Multiple shut shutouts this game or this year, excuse me. And yeah, we we felt like this is possibly the battle for number two in the district behind South Lake. Eaton still can can possibly top South Lake and claim the top top seed but most likely more than likely it will be South Lake the top this district and Eaton looks like they might be number two in this district so game about to go final only five seconds left Eaton Eagles gonna top the Keller Indians 43 to 21 they were able to wrap off 33 unanswered points after trailing 21 to 10 at half Huge come behind, come from behind win for them. I'm intrigued. I don't know the history of everyone. Uh, by, or, excuse me, Eaton Center, Daniel Jonas, showing a lot of love to the, the Keller coaching staff and players. He might have 
might have been over there in that system at one point, maybe one of the killer schools. Seems like he knows a lot of guys personally over there, the way he was <laughs> finding people uh, in the post game. But what a game for Eaton. Again, a complete turnaround. I was sitting here at halftime almost thinking it was a loss. Uh, surely, the way the offense was doing things, uh, still, you know, not much of a threat in the passing game. Oh, Lugo only threw. I'm going to refresh this. I don't think it's going to change. He only threw for 67 yards and 50% passing. But didn't need to do much more because him and J.B. Brown with their legs were able to do so much. Yeah. Final tally. Noah Lugo, 10 of 20, 67 yards, no touchdowns, two picks in the air. But J.B. Brown, 29 carries, 224 yards, and three scores. Lugo, 11 for 80 yards, and two scores, five rushing touchdowns. I mean, your leading receiver is Jaden Platt, catches three balls, 26 yards. J.B. Brown catches three for 17. So, really, J.B. Brown with 240 yards of offense and 32 touches. Do Incredible. most of the damage. Yep. Highlighting the some of the Keller offense. Uh, Trey Guerrero, 16 of 26, 236 yards, two scores, and one pick. Jackson Kratz comes out as the leading rusher, 13 carries for 97 yards, and the score. Uh, Austin Coleman carried it 15 times, 39 yards. So I just want to talk about really bottling the run game. Kratz had the one big run. Probably exactly, it was around 40 yards, 50 yards or so, I think, on the touchdown run for Kratz. But Austin Coleman, you know, is supposed to be the starter. 2.6 yards a carry. That's a, uh, that's a tremendous job by this defense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, Mario and Henry talked about him being a top 10 receiver in the area, yardage-wise at least. He had 11 catches for 111 yards. I mean, that's not bad. No, that's that's ten, I mean, it's only 10 yards per no. carry, which is 11 down from his average. But, but, but his average is ridiculous. 21 yards or 20, like 20.3, 20 I believe it is, uh, average yards per carry on the no, year. No one else had more than one reception. He was the only receiver with more than with multiple catches. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they were only looking for him. It seemed like, seemed like, other than when they hit Seth Henry for that deep touch, the first touchdown of the game, they hit Seth Henry for that deep touchdown. But turnovers, Keller turned it over three times, two fumbles, an interception, two turnovers for Eaton on the two interceptions by Lugo. Penalties were low: four for thirty-one for Keller, six for fifty-two on Eaton. Again, uh, Keller as a team averaged 3.28 yards per rush and ran for 128 yards as a team. Eaton averaged 7.11 yards per carry and 313 as a team. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so this game, not it didn't look like last week, but it was the same type of game. They churned out the win through the on the ground. They had a lot of rushing. Uh, they had a lot of success last week against uh, Byron on the ground. That's how they were able to get that win last week, and they did the same thing again this week. Noah Lugo picks up his first career win. Yeah, first career start, first career win. He's gaining a lot of valuable um, playing time. He played last much most of the game last week. He played the full game this week. Yeah, it gives you something to work with next year. I know yeah. it's still you know yeah, you focus on this year, but Fussell will be back. Fussell will be back. Yeah, yeah, for the the next games, uh, hopefully Fussell is. A senior of QB wise, I'm saying yeah, Lugo, so a sophomore. Next year, yeah, he, next year. He, he he could be the QB for this team for the next few years if he's showing some promise. Yeah, Which and he is. I mean, he is. Other than tighten up the arm a little. Yeah, bit. other yeah, other than those balls he short armed to White Bear, he did play. Oh, well, and then also those two interceptions. He did play fairly well. He didn't do a lot bad. He looked great with his legs. He, his legs looked great. Showed a lot of speed on his touchdown runs. Just a lot of. Resilience too, just bouncing back in the second half. You don't have a great first half. The yeah. way that first half ended with the and whole, you still throw do you spike it in the, the third? The yeah, but yeah. staying confident and really give a lot more credit to this Eaton defense pitching a second half shutout. Yep, and really getting the energy going with their touchdown. I mean, the, yeah, the Eaton defense outscored Keller in the second half. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did. You're right. Yeah, Eaton's defense wins the battle of the defenses. Both defenses. Like you said, are I believe top ten in most categories in the area. So, Eagles get the win tonight, their third district win in a row. Keller falls to I believe what one and two in the district. Yeah, with the two losses being everyone's two yeah, losses. South, yeah, South, Lake, South and Lake and Eaton. Yeah, Keller now gets the easier side of the schedule with 
Fossil coming up, yeah. Byron, Timber Creek. They got Timber Creek next week, yeah. They've already played Central as their win. Well, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. We'll see you next week again. Thanks for watching the Eagles take on the Indians on Vibe Live. Y'all have a good night.